Good morning. Our lesson for today is about soil analysis. So when you say analysis by the soil uh, test kit or using SDK, it is a quick method of evaluating the fertility status of the soil. So it involves a chemical analysis that measure the amount of nutrients in the soil that are available to the plant. Results are interpreted and used as basis in making a recommendation on the right kind and amount of fertilizer to apply for a particular crop grown in the soil being tested. SDK is a complete package of soil testing. So it, it uses normally a uh, simple colorimetric um, chemical analysis in which chemical reagents are made to react with the soil sample in a test tube in a give um, characteristic color depending on the amount of available nutrient in the soil. So the colors depending on the amount of available um, and which is also matched with the standard color in the color chart. So it indicates whether the soil is low, medium, or high in available nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Also determine in similar manner in the soil pH or what we call the, and also acidity rather. SDK is also cheap, handy, quick, and easy to use. It does not require sophisticated laboratory instruments and um, a specialized training for the user. Uh, soil testing can be done right away in the field and results are obtained within the hour. It is therefore a useful tool to farmers and extension workers who oftentimes need for an immediate answer as to what kind and amount of fertilizer to use for a crop grown in the soil. SDK is a small box with a size of 19 centimeter by 11 centimeter, which is uh, weighing about one kilogram. So it contains chemical reagents, procedures, and a color chart. So the SDK has also a tables for fertilizer recommendation for a different or various root crops or crops and the procedure for proper soil sampling technique. So it, the SCK is a product of a research from the Department of Soil Science, um, University of the Philippines, Los Banos, Laguna, in co cooperation with the National Food and Agricultural Council. And also the Bureau of Soil and Water Management or what we call the BSWM produces the SDK for analysis of soil pH, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So let's have now the reminders on the use and the care of the soil test kit. Of course, the first one is analyze or test only soils that are properly collected. Number two, avoid contamination. Use only the test tube designed or designated for the element being analyzed. For example, use test tube label N for testing nitrogen, K for potassium, P for phosphorus, and pH for soil pH. Next, use clean and preferably dry test tube Another is do not interchange droppers and cups to avoid this immediately pit back the dropper or cup into the corresponding bottle after each use. Always keep bottles tightly closed. Do not smoke during soil sampling or analysis. The chemicals are corrosive and poisonous. Avoid inhalation or contact with your skin or clothing. Keep the test kit away from the reach of children. Store it in a cool and dry place. And last, when chemical reagents run out, refills can be bought at the Bureau of Soil and Water Management or at any designated refill centers at minimal cost. Now let's have the proper soil sampling. The main objective actually of the soil sampling is to collect a small amount of soil. 
um, weighing about a half kilo that will represent the soil in a large area. For example, in a hectare farrow slice that weigh about 2 million kilogram, since only small amount of soil sample is used in chemical analysis and the results are projected for a large quantity of the soil, the accuracy of the soil testing depends largely uh, or largely on proper soil sampling. Uh, using the most common farm tools and materials such as shovel or spade, knife, and trowel, uh, we also use a small pail and plastic bags. Following are the steps on proper soil sampling. Number one, of course, is make a map of the farm showing sampling area or what we call the SA. So. Uh, all we have to do is divide the farm into sampling areas. So each sampling area should be more or less uniform in cropping history, past lime and fertilizer treatments, slope, degree of erosion, soil texture, and color. Each sampling area should not be more than 5 hectares. Next step is collect spot soil samples from each sampling area. In each sampling area, dig at least five to 10 pits and collect spot soil sample in each pit. The number of spot soil samples mark X in the um, area depends on the size of the sample. So a spot soil sample is taken in the following manner. So it can be before digging the pit, you need to clear the soil surface from litters and vegetation. And of course, using a spade or shovel, dig a pit to a depth of 20 to 30 centimeter. Next step, from one vertical side of the pit, take a slice of soil, two to three centimeter thick, with a single downward thrust of the spade. Using a knife or a trowel, trim the slice of soil on both sides to a bar three to four centimeter width. This bar of soil representing one spot of sample. In um, this is also place a uh, you also place the soil sample in a pail or any suitable container. So if a subsoil sample is needed. Take a bar of soil from the succeeding 20 to 30 centimeter depth. The subsoil and surface sample should be placed in separate containers. So cover the pit and move to another spot. Next step is to take composite soil sample. So after collecting all the spot soil sample of a particular sampling area, pulverize mix thoroughly and remove stones and fresh leaves from the soil in the container. So composite soil sample is about half a kilo, uh, is taken from the pail and placed in a clean plastic bag. The composite soil sample, which represent the soil in the sampling area is ready for the chemical analysis. So using a soil test kit or maybe sent to a soil testing laboratory with pertinent label and information. So we're done uh, the how to um, how to test the soil properly or how to get a soil sampling properly. So now let's talk about soil pH. So when you say soil pH, um, this is a measure of degree of acidity or alkalinity. And the pH of seven is neutral. The lower the pH below nine is the more acidic the soil is. On the other hand, the higher the pH above seven, the soil becomes alkaline. So it is very important to know the pH of the soil because the availability of most nutrient elements for plant growth and the uh, occurrence of toxicities of elements is related to soil pH. So most plant nutrients are in uh, readily available form at the soil pH. So most plant nutrients are in um, um, ranging from 5.5 to 7. So hence, most plants prefer to grow within this range. However, um, nutritional disorder usually appear when pH values becomes 
um, higher or lower. So the following shows the nutritional disorders observed in the relation to soil pH. So we have here a table shows disorder of a lower and higher soil pH. For the lower than 5, um, disorder are deficiencies of phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and molybdenum, and also has toxicities of aluminum, iron, and manganese. While for the higher that than 7.5 soil pH, the disorder ha uh, deficiencies of phosphorus, potassium, iron, and zinc, and has toxicity of boron. Okay, so the productivity of either highly acidic or highly alkaline soil can be improved by using um, any or combination of the following measures. So number one is use plant species or varieties that are tolerant to either um, highly acidic or highly alkaline uh, reaction. Number two, application of lime for acidic soil, application of gypsum and leaching the soil with good quality water for saline, uh, salt affected area, um, and alkaline soil. Then application of fertilizer containing the possible um, deficient element as mentioned above in either highly acidic or highly alkaline soil condition. So for low land rise, if the soil pH is 7.5 or greater, the soil is liably uh, deficient in zinc and either of the following is recommended. So number one, dipping the roots of rice seedling in uh, 22 to 4% zinc oxide suspension and also uh, mixing with a portion of a fertilizer at basal application by using 5 kilograms zinc sulfate per hectare. Okay, so now let's talk about soil testing or how to test the soil. Um, so soil pH testing. So this is the procedure of how to test soil pH. For uh, soil pH, First step is fill the test tube with a soil sample up to the scratch mark. Next, Add 12 drops of solution CPR pH indicator dye. Next, mix by gently swirling the test tube 20 times. Okay, for the next step, repeat step three after about two minutes and let the test tube stand for five minutes. Supposedly that uh, we rest it for two minutes, so we will mix it again uh, 20 times.
Okay, next uh, steps uh, to get the pH of the soil, match the color of the solution on top of the soil with the corresponding color chart of pH indicator that I use. If the soil pH is 5.8 or higher, repeat steps 1 to 5 using the BTB instead of CPR. However, if the soil pH is less than or equal to 5, repeat steps 1 to 5 using BCG instead of CPR. and compare the result in the color chart shown in our slide. For the nitrogen testing, here is the procedure or instruction of how to test nitrogen. For the nitrogen uh, testing, the instruction are number, number one, of course, fill the test tube with soil samples up to the scratch mark. Next is add 24 drops or one ml of solution N. So we have here the solution N. After adding 24 drops of solution N, the next step is mix well by gently swirling the test tube 30 times. So after swirling, the next step is to repeat the step number three after about five minutes. So meaning to say, we're going to wait for five minutes and then after five minutes, we will repeat it again by swirling the test tube 30 times and let the test tube stands for 30 minutes. Supposedly, it's already five minutes. So we will repeat it again uh, or repeat the swirling. Supposedly that we already did 30 times uh, swirling the test tube. So let the test tube stand for 30 minutes. So after 30 minutes, the next step is to match the color of the resulting solution on the, on the soil or on the color chart below. So take note if the soil is low, medium, or high in available nitrogen. So in our screen, you can uh, there is the color chart. So I have here the color chart also. So we will match the color. So definitely the result of our test in nitrogen testing. So for our soil sample, it has low nitrogen content. So this is how we test um, nitrogen by using soil testing kit. Now let's check how to test phosphorus testing. Now we're going to test the phosphorus, okay, using uh, the different steps in testing phosphorus test. The first step, of course, is to fill the test tube with soil sample up to the scratch mark. Next, 
Next is add 24 drops or 1 ml of solution P and 4 drops of solution P1. So we have here the solution P and we also have here the solution P1. So first solution P, 24 drops. Next is add four drops of solution P1. Then after adding the 24 drops of P and 4 drops of P1. Mix well by gently swirling the test tube for about one minute. So after one minute, the next step is repeat step three after about three minutes and let the test tube stand for five minutes. It's three minutes, so repeat it again. So we're going to uh, gently swirling the test tube for about one minute again. Okay, suppose it's already one minute, so we're going to test or we're going to let the test tube stand for five minutes. Suppose it's already five minutes, the next step is take one foil or a thin strip and wrap it firmly at the one end of the plastic steep, stick. Sorry. So this is our plastic st stick. So we need to get a strip of um, foil and then we're going to wrap it on the end of our plastic stick. Okay, so we're, we have here now already so and then the next step is without disturbing the soil, steer the solution slowly with a thin strip for one minute. Then repeat this step about, about two minutes. Then always take note that the thin strip attached on the plastic um, can still be used for another set of four samples provided that the analysis are done on the same day and then rinse the thin strip with distilled water after each analysis. So supposedly that um, the test tube stand already for five minutes. So we're going to follow the sixth step. So slowly um, uh, steer the solution but not, and don't uh, disturb the soil. This is for about a minute.
So after one minute, repeat it again for another after two minutes for another one minute. And match the blue color in intensity of the solution with the color chart below. So take note if the soil is low, medium, or high in available phosphorus. So definitely uh, the picture shown in the screen. So we have here the picture. So uh, the color, as you can see, is low. So meaning to say our phosphorus in this type of soil uh, has a low Phosphorus content. For the potassium test, the first step is fill the test tube again up to the scratch mark with soil sample. Next step, add 24 drops of solution K and the 8 drops of solution K1. So first, we have the solution K, 24 drops. And then add eight drops of a solution K1. So we have here the solution K1. Eight drops. Next step, mix well by gently swirling the test tube for about one minute. Okay, after one minute, the next step is repeat step three after about three minutes and let stand for five minutes. So supposedly we let stand for three minutes. So we will repeat it again by swirling one minute. So repeat step three. Supposedly that we already uh, gently swirl the test tube for about one minute, we will let stand it for five minutes until the soil particles have settled at the bottom of the tube. Then after that, after five minutes, supposedly, add solution K2 as follows. So we have here the solution K2. So remember the following instruction for the solution number two or K2. The first one, slowly insert the dropper containing 0 0.6 ml of solution K2 inside the test tube so that it is, its tip is about two centimeter above the solution. So that's, let's like, like this. And then 
slowly add 12 drops of solution K2 and one drop at a time. Do not mix or shake the solution. So, Okay, do not mix the solution. Then let's stand for two minutes and then observe the appearance of a cloudy yellow layer on top of the orange solution. A distinct cloud yellowish layer indicates that the soil has sufficient available potassium. There is no need to apply potassium fertilizer. So if there is a cloudy appearance above your solution, meaning to say the soil itself has sufficient or available potassium. While, okay, if there is no distinct cloudy yellowish layer appear on the top of your solution, the soil means it has a deficient or no available potassium. So supposedly that it is already two minutes. So as I uh, check the solution, uh, the result is there is no yellow cloudy layer appeared on our on the top of our orange solution. So meaning to say the soil that we used for this sample has no potassium available. So that's how we test the potassium um, nutrient, nutrient in the soil. Okay, thank you so much for the disclaimer of this video. I agree by Sir Dan is an educational vlog. The purpose of this vlog is to provide free educational to discuss or to education to discuss lessons and clarify issues related to agriculture. The channel owner wishes to thank the trustworthy sources that have helped make this edu vlog possible. Any opinions or views shared in this vlog are also personal and belong to I agree by Sir Dan. The views of any person that is directly or indirectly connected to the owner do not inherently represent them. In addition, any dependency you put on the materials included herein is solely at your own risk. Finally, if you need more details or have questions, please feel free to contact the owner.